Hey, and welcome to another episode of the increasingly inaccurately named episode show called, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Code Hour? It's a... Uh, this time it's not going to be about code, and it's not going to be an hour. So we'll uh, we'll just uh, we'll just roll with it here. This is uh, this is exciting because this is the first day of 2019, and so I thought I would start the season with a new type of episode altogether, and that will be um, not about code. Uh, shockingly, um, one of the things I love to do in addition to coding is making stuff. And one of the things I make, as you probably know, is the Siren of Shame product that you plug in and, and uh, monitors your continuous integration server. And when the build breaks, uh, the lights go around and go, you know, it goes wah, wah, wah. So that's been, that's been a fun project of mine, but uh, making that is actually the, the really fun part for me. And uh, one of the things that needs to do is you need to do some soldering, you need to do some um, assembling of wires and electronics. And so uh, I thought I'd show part of that process today and show you all about reflow soldering, which is a type of soldering that is really handy to do when you have surface mount LEDs. And I have, uh, I have um, a new thing which just arrived uh, today, actually just arrived yesterday, which is a whole bunch of PCBs, printed circuit boards. And so I'm going to solder those. And I thought, well, why not just do this on the air and show some of my listeners uh, some of the fun stuff that I enjoy doing in addition to coding. So that's the plan. Um, but uh, it's a little bit out of context if I just show that, so I thought I'd make an episode that also goes over the just the, sort of the broad strokes of the process of creating a, a thing, in this case a circuit board, and um, how, you, how you go about making that from beginning to end. Uh, there's tons of content out there on the details, so this is just going to be broad strokes. So let me just get started with, uh, let's just jump in, and I'm going to show you uh, probably... Actually, the very first thing that you're going to want to do, and uh, I'm jumping around cameras here because I've got I'm going to have two cameras, uh, so I'm going to jump over to this camera. Oh, hi! I'm down here in my basement, and uh, I am um, I am going to show you some of the cool stuff in my um, in my uh, uh, basement office space here. And so one of the things I was going to show you is that the great best way to get started with uh, any kind of electronics project is to get a little breadboard like this, uh, maybe get an Arduino. And um, if you get a kit, like I get this kit, which is, I got this kit, which is the SparkFun electronics kit. And it's really nice because it has a whole bunch of projects, a great way to get started. And, uh, and then it gives you uh, this. And so uh, with any project like these light strips that I'm going to be building today, uh, if you can if you can get started by prototyping it out, you've got a dedicated plus um, on the board, uh, five volts, and you've got a ground, and you and so you without even just uh, you know fiddling around with anything, you can plug in an LED to uh, to the boards here, and then you can plug in a resistor because you always got to have resistors with your LEDs, right? So you can do that, and you can light up an LED, and then you're going to get pretty darn close to the boards that I'm going to be reflow soldering today. Maybe I need to move this camera up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, that is uh, that is. Uh, a great place to get started with any project like this. You prototype it out, and when you prototype it out, you generally have these components that sort of stick through in here um, because they're just so easy. You don't have to do any soldering, and soldering is not terrible. It's just, I don't know, it, it's a little, I think it's a little intimidating, and, and when you're just kind of in an experimenting kind of a mode, uh, you you don't necessarily want that. So I've got some resistors here, and these are like, these, are, these came with a kit. They are uh, 330 ohm resistors, and I'd need to get online and validate if this would actually be good for lighting an LED. But you know, when you're when you're doing things, you uh, you just plug them in. Uh, you know, this is probably too basic for a lot of people here. But uh, let's see. I wanted to let's see if I plugged the plus. This is all connected in the plus, and the minus is all, all these minuses are connected, and then each one of these rows they're connected. So if I wanted to connect plus to uh, row number two, and then I connect row number two back down to um, minus, then I'd be, uh, I'd be making a, a circuit. And if I put a resistor or uh, an LED in there, then, then that would light up, whatever. Uh, too, too, much, too much detail. Okay, let's, let's keep moving here. So that's, that's the way you get started with these things from there. Once you've got, 
a working prototype, then you want to make it a printed circuit board out of it so that you can mass produce it or so that you can have something which is, um, uh, uh, you know, sticks, sticks easily into other things. So that is when you get to back to the software. So I'm going to jump back from this camera back to this camera. Okay, so this is going to be, a, well, like I said, this is going to be kind of a weird episode and I'll probably fix it all up during post-processing. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, what do we do first? Okay, so uh, typically once you've got your basic design, you go into uh, Eagle. This is a more complicated board that we don't really need to get into. Um, but I use, there's two different pieces of software you could use, and one of those pieces of software is Eagle. Uh, Eagle is a really nice piece of software for, called a uh, CAM, computer aided machine, is, it, is that what Eagle is? Um, something like that. Um, don't care about, I'm going to do these short strips. Here we go. Uh, oh no, you normally don't start with the board. Uh, there's two different views of each of these things. There's, there's the schematic view, which is where you normally start. So you start in a schematic view, which is like, I don't know, it's like uh, high, it's not high level, uh, it's still specific, but you're you're not worrying about exactly where things are located, you're just saying how things connect to each other. So in this case, this is saying, okay, we've got a plus source, we've got a minus source, and, um, and this is how we're gonna hook it up. So this is saying we're connecting up five LEDs uh, with five uh, resistors, we're hooking them all up in parallel, not in serial, right? Because the electricity is going to go zoom up here and over here and over here and over here and over here, and over here simultaneously, uh, and it's going to go through all of these simultaneously. And that's important when you're calculating resistance. Uh, way too much. Not, not not worth getting into the details at the moment. But anyway, so you you generally design your stuff at a high level here, and then you can zip on over to the uh, to making a board. And uh, like I said, there's tons of YouTube videos on on how to do this, but uh, once you've once you've got it all laid out in your schematic view, then you switch over to your board view, you draw a board up like this, and you can place the components, uh, say, and, and you generally when you start from zero, like this will just say, hey, it looks like you've got components you need to place, and then it makes it really easy to hook them all up, and you go over to like add, and you can add a component, and you can search through like, uh, let's say, uh, you know, I guess I guess it's worth talking about through hole and surface mount. So, the vast majority of getting started tutorials are, are probably going to have you do through hole. And to do that, you have like you've got uh, this is going to look a little weird with my hands, but you got you got a hole uh, in the board, and you've got a component like uh, like that resistor I was showing you, and it, it plugs into the, the two holes. And once it goes through, oh, actually I can I can show this. Uh, Here is this, uh, this is, I don't know if this is going to show, but I've got um, this is a through this was done with through hole. So these LEDs went through, um, and then on the back, uh, I cameras. Okay, ready, go. Okay, okay, I'm back up here, and uh, so this is a this is a this is a simple prototype of this board that I did once a long time ago, and um, actually I made a lot of these for a really long time. But you can see that these things pop out, and on the bottom side. Uh, what had been the case was the two, the two, um, the two pins were going straight through it like this, and then uh, I went through with the soldering iron. Uh, got my little soldering iron here, and I'd like flip them up over up uh, yeah, this, and uh, then I'd put some lead solder on because I, I got to be honest, I got to. This, this is the point at which I admit to you, got to be honest, I really do not like. Um, lead-free solder, and I'm a bad person for saying that, but leaded solder is just so much easier to work with, and the, these things are all going to be enclosed inside of um, a product, and in fact, they're enclosed in, in one area, and then they're enclosed yet again. You'd have to really work at it to try and get in here to uh, say if you really, you had, you know, someone who just really wanted to lick the back side of this. Um, you know that's that's going to kill you, right? It's not not going to be um, not going to be good with all the the lead. So that's why um, I know I know my audience is like, don't do it, Lee. But uh, yeah, so so you solder solder solder, put a little solder, and then you um, and then I snip them. 
and that's what makes the through the through hole soldering and that's a good way to get started but once you're into ma mass manufacturing what we're doing today is not going to be doing any uh, not going to be doing any through hole because it's so much easier when you're doing a lot of these things let's say you've got a big panel of things um, if you can just place the components on top with a little bit of solder paste which is what we're going to be getting into today this is uh, some solder paste I hooked up I bought on Amazon I'm kind of jumping all over the place hopefully you all don't mind too much but this solder paste is a type of solder which is uh, normally I guess what I use is I use something like this this is uh, just a spool of solder and you can, you can push it in and you can um, you can heat it at 350 degrees and it's an alloy it's an alloy metal that's like uh, lead and a bunch of other things and um, and you can um, you know you, you can um, you can do surface mount Stuff. You can do through hole stuff really easily, but surface mount's a little bit a little bit harder. And so, um, let's see. Do I have an example? I don't have an example. I'll get to it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the solder paste. It's going to have a flat surface, and these components that I bought, which I'll show again later, I'm going to squirt it onto the onto the flat pad, and then put the component on top of it and kind of smoosh it into the paste. But it's just paste at that point. It needs to be hardened, and to do that, we're going to Oh, I'm losing things. Uh, we're going to uh, take take our components and we're going to cook them on uh, what is this? This is a pancake griddle. This is um, not the kind of gr pancake griddle that you want to cook pancakes on anymore because I've been cooking uh, lead-based products on it for some time and that really really would not be very tasty. Well, actually it might be taste just fine but it, it certainly would have a good chance of giving you brain damage. So, all right. Now that we've straightened that up, I'm going to go back to the other camera, and then I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the process of, of dropping in a three-hole component. Ready? Go. Okay. I'm back here again on this camera, and back on my computer. And <clears throat> my rose. Oh, we were going to drop in a, uh, a, a a surface mount resistor. And so to do that, we're going to do an R. And we could do a uh, 1206, I think. And here is a resistor, a 1206 resistor. And this is going to give us two little pads. And uh, it'll give us a little bit of um, silk screening on there. And silk screening is the process of um, putting in some text on top of your on top of your PCB, printed circuit board, so that you can remember which, which resistor this was and which um, whether you need which you know you needed to put the the 20 ohm one or the uh, 150 ohm one. Okay, so that's that is Eagle. Uh, another product which is also uh, perfectly reasonable to use for this is KiCad, um, and KiCad is 100% uh, free and it's not quite as uh, it's not quite as full featured, but it's 100% free, which is awfully nice, and so you can. Uh, I don't. I don't need to get into it, but uh, I'll just show you. This is this is what KiCad is and what it looks like. Yeah, here we go. Here's here's KiCad. It looks kind of similar, except, except it's a dark theme. Uh, I have a different uh, component here which I've built, and uh, and but Eagle is kind of the standard. Eagle is the standard, but it has a limitation. The free version of it has a limitation that you cannot um, do more than like I don't know five inches by five inches or something like that so some kind of size kind of like that uh, but if you're gonna do well, if you're gonna watch a YouTube video the chances are pretty good that it's in Eagle so it's worth worth knowing Eagle um, okay so there we are we've gotten to the we've prototyped it we've uh, built out the schematic and then we've laid it all out in um, laid it all out in Eagle or KiCad and There we go. And now you're ready to ship it to manufacture. And so I have over here a great place to do manufacturing. Oh, by the way, this was the this was the solder paste. I showed you this earlier. This is the solder paste that I ordered. I just picked up picked up some on Amazon. I've um, I, I I don't have enough knowledge to really recommend anything. So I I guess we're gonna find out today whether I made a good purchase because this video is either gonna end well or it's gonna end poorly. 
So there you go. That is what I ordered. Oh, and um, if you're wondering where the 1206, came, uh, the 805 came from, this is the different. I just did a quick Google search, but this is or Bing search or whatever this is. Uh, but this is just giving you a visual illustration of the typical pad sizes, the typical component sizes. There's a uh, 0805, which is about the smallest you can do without magnification. Um, 1206 is much bigger and you can do that much more easily. Once you get down to the uh, 0603 it's getting pretty small and you need magnification and a steady hand to be able to work at that size and this 0402 is that's like that's at the point where you need a machine to do it I would I would say. So yeah we're gonna be at the 0805 level today. Uh, so you've gotten your board and typically at this point then you have to like export all of those different um, oh, you have to export all the different layers of the um, of the board, and there's a whole bunch of layers. There's a there's a silk screening layer on the front and a silk screening layer on the back, and then there's like a um, a, a pads pads uh, layer where where all the pads the metal is and where all the traces are, the traces that are moving the electricity around on the board. Um, and then there's a layer below that, which is where the drill holes are, because you've got to drill holes in this board. And then there's a, like a reverse on all of that for the backside. So typically, you have to go through this process of exporting all those layers, and then you ship them up to someone like um, Seed Studio. Seed Studio, which is they're, they they make um, they're a good they're a good place to get manufacturing done as well. I've used them in the past. I can recommend them, but I'm uh, at the point these days where I have just switched to using Oshpark exclusively. They're really inexpensive and they make it so easy. They take, um, you can just directly drop in your KiCad or your Eagle Cat files. Uh, just drag it over, boom, uh, they'll tell you how much it is and then you, you just uh, order it. And it, it's so inexpensive, it's amazing. They're 100% uh, made in the USA. Most um, other manufacturers manufacture in China, which is fine, but it adds to the cost. A little bit. Uh, the quality is really good, and the, uh, what's neat about them too is that they are they combine a whole bunch of orders together uh, to make one big board, and then they uh, and they'll take that board to manufacturing, split all the different bits out, and send them out. And so they can because they're making larger boards, um, and and have a whole bunch of other people's stuff on the same board as yours, they can get their cost much lower, which is uh, which is really cool. So. Um, I don't know. Okay, Osh Park, great, great stuff. Uh, solder paste, and so then, oh, so, so okay, so we're at the point where we can stop uh, switching back and forth from the computer. We're going to do 100% work from my basement now. So I'm going to switch cameras again. Hey, I'm back here in the basement, and now we're going to get to explore what it is that I received from um, Osh Park. They do all of their words in purple, which is kind of unique and interesting and it works just fine for me. So this is what I got back from them. Now this was the board that I did, but I wanted 150 of them because I'm at the point where I'm actually manufacturing at a decent size uh, quantity. So uh, I'm going to take this board, I'm going to open this uh, pack of, of panels. Uh, <laughs> I didn't need that pen. I uh, feel kind of like the Swedish chef. Her to her to her. Um, I don't have a knife handy. Uh, okay, okay, hang on. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. No knives. No knives. I'm gonna find the knife. I'm gonna go back and get my pen. Would you believe I'm in a basement full of tools, and a knife is not one of the things I have convenient. Oh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Put a knife in my pocket. Okay. That that would probably would have been the first place to start looking. And so when you order from Osh Park, they panelize. When you order enough items, they will, and they'll always panelize for you. So they're going to take your individual tiny little board and turn it into a whole bunch of boards. Um, and because I ordered enough things, they just um, shipped everything in a panel of just me, and I got a, I got a nice hefty little discount for doing that. So this is a panel <clears throat> of my boards, and you can see they did one, two, three, four, five times three, so this is 15 boards, and 
If we look on this side, you're going to see basically just a whole bunch of pads. And, uh, and then they're held together by these tiny little, um, tiny little uh, bridges. And so I'll just snap, snap one of those off. <coughs> and now I've got just one board. And it would be ideal if I had my... It'd be ideal if I had my uh, pliers. Oh, I got some pliers. It's a lot easier if you just, because I want to get just that last little bridge right there off. So I'm going to just to grip it real well and pull it. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is take this, and uh, we are going to, let's see, I'll put this on uh, a nice uh, little uh, holder here. Okay, less of me, more of what I'm doing. This is this is just a, a little mini vice here. One of the one of the many nice little things that a workshop needs to have. And so onto here, I am going to be putting these components. That I ordered. Um, oh, man. Okay, here we go. Back up here again. Hi, it's me again. Uh, I ordered uh, a whole bunch of components for this from DigiKey. And so, oh, time for the knife again. DigiKey is a great place to order your components. They're super inexpensive. There's other places too. Uh, isn't there like a place like Mauser or something? Um, here we go. I'm going to break into these. I got these ordered on cut tape, which is one of the forms that you can get them sent to you on. So this is a whole bunch of 33 ohm resistors, and that's the technical specs for that. And we can pull this out and uh, maybe just pull out the bit that we need. So we're just going to do like this, and then what you can do is you can take the tape and just sort of pull it back and pull back uh, to just get the resistors that you need. Now, the other thing that I ordered was LEDs. And uh, these red LEDs are, they're not as easy to place as the resistors because as you may know, resistors, uh, uh, LEDs, LEDs are direction, they're directional challenged. Uh, they're directionally unchallenged. I don't know, but uh, th th it definitely matters which direction you place them. And I can I can never remember um, with these little guys. They always have different markings on uh, as to which is the correct direction. But here you go. This is uh, my cut tape of uh, LEDs, and this is this is uh, a bunch of LEDs here. And when you run uh, a little bit of voltage through them, five, five volts. When you run a, a little bit of electricity through them, they, they light up. And you're going to make fun of me because uh, you're welcome to anyway, because I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making this stuff up as I go along and kind of pretending that I know what I'm doing. I did not have an electronics engineer engineering degree in school. I was computer science. And so um, all of this is just me, um, uh, you know, figuring it out as I go along. So, OK. It is time to pull out pull out the syringe. Now, this this stuff here is uh, it, it's got a very short shelf life, and so I would encourage you to. So they gave me two tips here. I'm just trying to decide what to do. So. Um, <clears throat> It's a good idea to try to use all of it, and you can store it in the fridge when you're not using it, but it'd be better if you just use all of it. I don't know. They've got a really tiny hole and a not-so-tiny hole, and ooh, that's a tough choice. That's a tough choice. The other thing that kind of annoys me about these tips is you end up leaving a bunch of um, solder paste right up in the thing, so if I choose poorly, then I've wasted a, you know, well, not that much, but I've wasted solder paste in the tip. Well, you know what? If you go small, 
What's the harm if you go small? Let's go smaller. <clears throat> okay, so I'm twisting off this tip here. There we go. And uh, you'll notice that I'm not eating while I'm doing any of this work because that would risk getting um, lead into my um, into my body. And I'm going to wash my hands when I'm done. There we go. I don't know if you saw that. Just popped up. Just popped out of the, and it's focusing on me, not on the tip of that. But whatever. We got a little bit of solder paste. Ah, this may be too. I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work. We're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna switch back to what it is that I'm doing. Maybe we can even zoom in on it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Zoom in, zoom, and there we go. Is that in focus, man? I hope it's in focus. So then at this point, uh, we're ready to place the, uh, oh, while uh, well, I'm thinking about it, by the way, this is um, one of the boards that I did recently from Osh Park, and uh, this may look familiar because this is this is just this was the this was the uh, picture that I use on the background of a lot of my stuff that I've done, and this was a board that I designed and I screwed up. I forgot to attach all of the grounds to all of the other grounds, which meant that the board was absolutely completely useless. So once I got it back, um, once I got it back, I was like, well. So I kind of want to test it out and see if it was useful. So I got all of these little um, cables and I connected all of the grounds, or at least most of the grounds, to see if it still worked. And it actually did. But um, this is just my kind of personal joke. If you're wondering where this comes from in the in the videos, it's my little little personal electronics joke of a kind of an epic fail that I did. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over to this tape here. And you know what I need is I need tweezers. And I've already lost one of my LEDs. This is why you order extras. Because another really good tool to have while you're working is these, uh, oh, you can't even see it because I'm so far zoomed in, the little, little tweezers like this. Actually, I'm going to get two cameras and maybe we can do a little fancy. Now let's turn this thing off. Off. Okay, here I am back in the basement, and maybe we can see two things simultaneously. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's put some solder paste down on all of the different pads. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Um, unfortunately, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, so I am going to switch to some magnification, which is kind of embarrassing because this really isn't that. <clears throat> this really isn't that small. All right, good enough for government work. Okay. Now it's time to play some components. Let's start with... Uh... Actually, I'm going to switch over to the laptop real quick and see if I can remember which direction the LEDs get placed. So a good place to always go is uh, when you order the things, if you can go to the data sheet, the data sheet will often give you an indication of, oops, looks like I've already downloaded this once before, of where the plus is and where the minus is. And okay. 
cathode is minus. Okay, so in this one, the cathode is minus. This says the cathode mark is here. Okay, so I guess the way this works is this uh, thing is pointing towards minus. I think that's the way it's supposed to work. We'll give it a try. I'll tell you what, let's put in all the resistors first anyway. We'll keep this simple. So there's our, there's our uh, little LED, and I believe the tick mark is pointing towards negative. And negative is towards me. So we're going to point this towards me. Okay, there we are. We are done with uh, laying out the components. I have no idea if this is actually going to work, so it might be time to try and pull out a little bit of electricity before we've soldered this into place. This is, um, this is me just trying something out. It might be a terrible idea, but uh, it might be fun too. <laughs> so let's see if we can get those LEDs to light and make sure that I connected them up in the correct order because I'd hate to put it on the on the heat and have it uh, have all that liquid solidify into the components and um, harden and then have to uh, swip them all around again because that would be um, hard once it's hardened to soften it all up again and, and it wouldn't be terrible but it's easier to work with now so let's give this a try I'm going to uh, get my smartphone uh, electronics kit back out the USB cable You know what, I don't need my mouse. <laughs> I can live without my mouse. Let's try that. Should have thought of this before I started. Okay, I'm gonna plug in my Arduino, get power flowing to the Arduino. It is on, it is booting up. You can tell based on the lights, but I don't think we even really care about it booting up. I don't particularly care about it booting up. Now I'm going to get some wires and I'm just going to plug them and just hold them to the, the positive and negative terminals and see if I can get those LEDs to light up. And if I can, then it's time to solder away. All right, I'm back here with some So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find on here, this is probably not going to be very visible, I'm going to do my best. Uh, I'm going to find a plus terminal that's maybe 5 volts, how about that one right there, that's 5 volts, and find, try and find a ground, there's a G and it looks like C and D actually, but I think it's G and D, there's just some dirt on it, yep, there's a G and D, there's usually several grounds. I'll take that ground and now put this back here and I'm going to try and pluck the, let's see, did I hit it back the way I'm supposed to? I put all the solder marks on the back because I don't really want it to see. Okay, negative is towards me. So we're going to take the ground and hold it to the one near me. I 
Okay. That didn't work. It'd be interesting to take out. our multimeter at this point and just make sure electricity is indeed flowing through here. Okay, that's good. Um, Want to make sure that, let's see, negative is toward me, right? We said negative toward me, yes. So, ground. Uh -huh, well, that's a problem. How about Maybe electricity just doesn't flow until until the solder paste is. Oh, that's a good sign. Did you see that light light up there? That really does make me happy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we're, we're ready. Okay, that's good enough. That's a good enough of a test for me, but I hope that positive positive and negative in the right way. Oh, I have no idea how much electricity was flowing through there. Hopefully not very much. <clears throat> okay, it is now time to move on to phase 15 of this ex uh, extenuating episode. Exten extenuating? Uh, increasingly long-lived. Uh, what do we call it? I don't know. All right, so now we're going to pull out our pancake. Time for the pancake griddle to come out, and gotta maybe it's time to zoom out just a little bit. Oh, that's in. Zoom out. Oh gosh, look at all this stuff I've got on my desk all of a sudden. That's one problem with these projects. It's really easy to end up with a cluttered workspace. And when you're um, getting a pancake griddle and turning it on to 350 degrees, I guess it's probably a good idea to make sure all your flammable things and all your other things are far away. By the way, you'll notice that I was a little bit quick and dirty with the, where I put the solder paste and how I put the components on there. One of the things that happens when you heat up solder paste to 350 degrees is it turns into a liquid and it kind of sucks down the components. And another layer that they put on these PCB boards is a, um, it's, uh, I forget what it's called, solder mask, solder mask layer. And solder mask is something which solder will not stick to. And so that's a really handy thing to have if you, um, if you uh, are doing reflow soldering because it means that all of the solder will flow away from the solder from the solder mask layer and onto the pads and so everything ends up just kind of flowing together once it hits 350 the magic 350 degrees so whew, okay this has been a long time coming we have oh uh, you're there okay how about we put you um, have a there. That will let it work for now. And then we gotta plug this thing in. So let's hope that I still have a plug. Oh, here we go. Okay, so you can see we've got a pancake griddle um plug here and we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this to three 150 degrees. I think that should be 350 degrees. And well, it's been a while since this thing's been used. Plug that in like that. And then plug this and in like this. Actually, you know what? I read the specs for that. It said 360 degrees, so let's turn it up just a little bit higher. And now, uh, here I am. Uh, I'm going to switch back to uh, I'm going to switch back to time lapse mode. So um, hopefully, you can watch this thing all just turn to liquid and zoom in, and uh, it'll be a cool video. Okay.
All right, well, how about that? I think we are done. Uh, this has been going on for about 10 minutes now, and uh, the solder paste has turned from a, um, a paste into a sort of a flat, uh, sort of a goo and then it turned into that what you would expect that silver that silver that uh, bright silver um, color that is indicative of I don't know it looks like mercury or something right it's shiny and it is an actual solder and so um, I had the fan turned on I had the doors open because I don't really know what kind of um, fumes this kind of stuff lets off probably probably not really good to do a lot of inhaling but um, I think this. I think this thing is. Uh, I think it's done. It looks really pretty. So uh, now what we do is we just sit here, sit here, and um, whoop, ten minutes is up. Now we just uh, sit here and uh, allow the. Oh, uh, that was that beeping was my uh, multimeter turning itself off or reminding me to turn it off. I'll probably need to get back on it in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna. I'm just gonna pause this uh, video again and come back here in about um, ten to 20 minutes until this thing has completely cooled um, but for now you can see this is starting to look uh, really professional it's kind of looking like a professional soldering whereas when it was the solder paste it looked really kind of ugly and sloppy um, but now it's um, it's really quite attractive so all right i will see you again in uh, t uh, 20 uh, 10 to 20 minutes all right i am back it has been um it's been about 10 minutes and this thing is um this thing's cool. I mean, it's it's coolish. I can I can still feel my uh, I can still feel a little bit of warmth on here, but um, overall, I think we're um, in good enough shape that this thing is ready to at least to to uh, take off and try to plug up to some electricity and let's see what happens. So um, I'm not going to hold it. Uh, I'm going to use some tweezers first here. I'm not. Whoa, I'm not really wild about. Uh, Okay, there we go. About touching a um, previously 350 degree. There we go. Surface and this thing is uh, well, it's warm, but it's not. It's not super warm. It's good enough. Good enough for government work. I love that phrase because I used to work for the government. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna put this super hot griddle over here. Some people, you know, instead of using griddles, they'll use the oven, or they'll use a toaster oven, or, um, I don't know, I guess there's a bunch of different things you can do, but I, I find this surface that works pretty, works pretty nicely for me. Um, oh, and the other thing is, you can also use a, uh, you can also use a reflow uh, heat gun. There's like a heat gun that you can push that like puts 350 degree air at it, and, and that apparently works well too. I don't have one of those tools, but it's on my list. It's on my list of things to get. By the way, um, I forgot to ask why do we why do we do uh, surface mount things? I think I touched on it briefly, but I was thinking about it during the break. I kind of missed uh, hitting this topic. And um, number one thing is that it's it's pick and place friendly. So at the point in time when you get up to um, producing quantities that it's no longer reasonable to do this process by hand, you can have machines which just automatically zip, 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 and place all of the components, and they're generally not very friendly. They don't work very well with through-hole components. They only work with surface mount, and so that's why professional boards, if you take a look inside of a computer or whatever, they're 100% surface mount because that's what the machines are set up to be able to do very quickly. That's one thing, and also there are certain components that really only work with surface mount. So if you have a clock, um, so this is a board... This is a board that um, that I produce. I don't know if I should put it here. This is a board uh, that's the main board part of the Siren of Shame. And I used to do all this by hand, by the way, uh, with the same process that I just showed today um, with all those tiny little components. And it's the reason that I'm blind today because um, these things are, um, they're a serious pain to try to, uh, to try to do by hand. So I get this, I get these all done in China, but I had a bit of an overage in components of these and an underage in this, in the, um, in uh, in these, so I, that's why I needed to kind of get caught up. I had more people ordering small sirens than ordering the big port sirens than I expected, and so now I just have um, 150 of these to do uh, by hand because it's cheaper to do it. It's considerably cheaper to do a small batch like 150 uh, by hand than it is to have a pick and place machine get all set up because there's a lot of setup costs which are kind of expensive. 
Um, but I don't know, maybe I'm getting too much into the uh, manufacturing. Anyway, for now, um, it's time to plug this guy in. So mm, let's go back over here. I've got a, okay, I've got a, I've got my Arduino again. Um, I've got this one hooked up to, uh, to ground, and I've got this one here hooked up to uh, five volts. And so I'm just going to hold it in place because that's good enough for now. So uh, let's see if I can remember. This was negative, so we'll put this one was ground. So we'll put the negative to ground like yeah, and then uh, we'll put the positive. Hey, look at that! Huzzah! We've got. Oh, it's work better if I turn out the lights. Oh, there. Uh, Echo, turn out the basement lights. We have oh you can see oh yep yep there we go we've got we've got some illumination there we go echo turn on the basement to 100 percent okay bingo so uh that is uh that's some great stuff so um all right well uh thank you for sticking with me through this episode i hope you learned something i hope you had some fun um i certainly did this is a fun way to to bring in the new year and uh as always um if you enjoy this um increasingly inaccurately named podcast the code hour then please subscribe it totally helps me out and uh, you know otherwise uh have a have a wonderful 2019 and i will uh i'll see you again soon